<laughs> and we are live. We just missed Bo the cat. He was on the back of my chair, but, but I'm Bye, excited Bo. to see you. And we are here to talk about Shopify and Pinterest, how to use these BFFs to grow your sales. I'm Elisa Meredith, and I am joined by the wonderful Crystal Waddell. Welcome. Aww, you're so sweet, Elisa. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I've been trying to get you on the show for a while now, so I'm glad it, I'm glad it worked out. Mm -hmm. Did I pronounce your last name correctly? I forgot to ask. You did. Most people say Waddle. No. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not offended because it's no, it's not my original last name, you know? Get it. It's Get Waddell. it. You nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You're welcome. So uh, we were talking just before we came on and you were just talking to a client about Pinterest and Shopify. So you are all warmed up and ready to go. Yeah, and so, <laughs> yes, so it, this is your thing though, right? You, like you help Shopify sellers use Pinterest to explode their website traffic and grow their sales. Would that be a good way to describe who you are? Yes, pretty yeah. accurate. <laughs> okay. All right. So if you are watching and you want to see and, and learn more from Crystal, which I know you do, you're going to want to go to pinmyshop.com. Now, I have been playing with a little bit of technology this week uh, and set up an SMS messaging account. So mm. if you want to never miss a show, you can text the word show to 1035 and it will send you a message as long as I remember to set it up, which I will try to do. <laughs> okay, so that lots of excitement going on, but I really like sometimes I have a guest on because I'm excited about a certain thing and I have a lot to say. This is more like I'm really excited about a certain lot thing and I really need to hear what you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Shopify, like what's I mean, Shopify is like the biggest e-commerce platform for small business, right? Yes. Well, yeah. it is. It's built for e-commerce. It's, a, it's yeah. a website that's built for e-commerce. And that's so different than when you're taking a website that is... Like a WordPress you know, or something? Yeah, like a multi-use site that's yeah. not primarily optimized for e-commerce. Um, they just can't compare with Shopify because Shopify was built to help people sell, you know, so... Yeah. And I haven't seen any other website or platform that went to such great lengths to to um, integrate with Pinterest either. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, yeah. that's the whole reason why I started with Shopify, because oh. I, I was a GoDaddy website builder girl for really probably six years. Yeah, because it was easy. It was, um, you know, ready to go out of the box. You know, I didn't have to do too much but I also didn't realize what I was missing, you know, and it's not necessarily that particular site's fault that I didn't know about SEO and those type of things. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, go, well, I don't, you know, GoDaddy was a little bit slower to roll things out. You know, Shopify would always seem to be, um, you know, on the cutting edge of everything. And I, there was times I started a Shopify store mm -hmm. and then I stopped because I got busy, you know, and I never followed through. But when Pinterest introduced shopping and the catalogs, I knew I had to make the switch. And so I I made I canceled my other website and I gave myself two weeks. I was like, you gotta make this transfer or else. Smart. So wow. yeah, I backed myself up. <laughs> I think that's really smart. Corner. You were your own accountability partner. <laughs> oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Because I, I knew, I knew that when I contacted support for my website. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, we don't have this feature yet. We don't know when we're going to get this feature. My business is powered by Pinterest. So to have my shop right there on the platform, that's a no brainer. So I had to make the switch. Yeah. I'm so glad I did. Oh, good. Okay. So how, how easy is it to make a, a new site? Like, let, let's say that I find something I want to sell. I don't know what it, what it would be, but um, how quickly could I get a shop, Shopify site up and running? Well, to go from knowing nothing to a shop running, I would say less than a week. Um, wow. I built I built pinmyshop.com in less than a day. Oh, so, it yeah. doesn't look like it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's the thing. If you know what you're doing, obviously, you know, it's, it's with anything. You're faster once you know, like, how to use mm. the interface. Um, and I would also say that Shopify has got some amazing uh, new tools 
they just announced this last year. And I was just like so hyped about it because, you know, page speed is such an important thing. Yeah. And, um, oh, you disappeared for me. Um, I'm um, still here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but page speed is such an important thing. And they have created uh, new free themes that load even faster, um, even hmm. on mobile. So that was pretty exciting too. That is cool. Can you host a blog on Shopify as well? Or would you have to do you use WordPress as well? You can. Um, I do it both ways. Um, okay. I have a WordPress blog that I really need to do more with that's connected to one Shopify store. And then I use the built-in blog feature of Shopify for oh. uh, my main business. Yeah. How good, how good is that platform? If you're used to WordPress, will you like Shopify's blogging platform? Well, I think it depends. You know, I, I wasn't as like an avid WordPress user, so it wasn't, you know, oh, I don't have as many features as I need. Mm -hmm. um, what Shopify has and what they do better than anybody else is they have problem solvers who are always creating apps. So oh. that's how I learned about SEO. It was actually a recommendation from Shopify or something talking about SEO. And so I searched the app store and they have these, these apps that you just, you know, add to your site. And, you know, it gives me feedback on my SEO, on my meta descriptions, on all of those things. Wow. So, yeah. And that's the advantage, right? When you are a huge platform, there's going to be a lot more options, people building things specifically for that platform. That's great. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, to me, that's something very specifically awesome about Shopify because mm -hmm. I never remember anyone building a free app that I could integrate when I was over on just the GoDaddy e-commerce box yeah, site. Yeah, makes sense. You know, mm -hmm. so this this is this is game changing. Anything that you think would make your business better, there might be an app for that. That's already fabulous. created. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. We want to say to hello to our friend Holly Winchester. She is in Nova Scotia. Thank you for joining us, Holly. If you're watching or you're on the replay, let us know where you are calling from and what you're hoping to get out of this episode about Pinterest and Shopify. So I am um, I am selfishly asking all the questions I want to know the answers to oh, <laughs> because yeah. I'm here. But please, if you're watching, drop your questions in. If you have even real specific questions, um, let us know because we are here. We are here for you. And we have Crystal for just a, a, not even an hour now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we want to get we want to get everything we can. OK, so let's talk about Shopify. Shopify, who is it best for? Like if I'm watching and I'm wondering if it's good for me, how do I decide? Well, Shopify is good for anybody who has an e-commerce business who's selling something. Um, I have a little bit of a different take on it um, because right. the primary users of Shopify, I would have to guess, are drop shippers. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of drop shippers. Maybe it's not the primary customer base of Shopify, but that's a big thing in Shopify. And within the Shopify communities are you know people who source products from other people and then have someone else ship them, you know, not that shipping them sense. at their home. So there's that's your first group of people is your Shopify um, drop shippers. And then you have, um, you know, just maybe your transitioning Etsy sellers um, or handmade business okay. owners. That's the category that I fall into. Um, and so that's what I did is um, I kind of transitioned off of Etsy to my previous platform then transition to that platform to Shopify. And I still sell across multiple platforms, um, mm. but Shopify has been by far the best place to take what I learned from the back end of Etsy and apply it to an e-commerce storefront. And okay. then the new thing that I'm trying right now, and that's where Pin My Shop comes in, is I'm actually uh, using Pin My Shop as a Shopify site to sell services. So I sell my Pinterest services oh, there. I okay. have a, a Pinterest book there. I have some workshops, courses, that type of thing. Because I thought, why spend all of that money on, you know, a Kajabi or Kartra if I'm not always using all of those features and I can probably build it, you know, with some app support over on Shopify for $29 a month. So that hmm. was my... That was my mindset with going with Shopify, not to mention the push that it has out on Pinterest. 
So I was like, that's the way that I can grow my business the fastest. Okay, here's kind of a niche question, and maybe in the audience you're wondering the same thing. Okay, so Phoebe Moon is here saying that she doesn't know how to get a Shopify store started, hoping to pick up some tips. Not sure if it's really for you. Phoebe, let us know what you'd like to what you'd like to do with Shopify, and maybe we can get some detailed answers. But okay, how do you get started? What's how hard is it? What do you do? Gosh, it's really not hard at all. They have tons. If you just Google start a Shopify store, you're going to get a ton of affiliate links, I'm sure, for people promoting like, you know, start your Shopify store through this link, you know, um, so that they get credit and you get, you know, a two week, four week free trial, right? Um, Shopify also has something called Shopify University. So right here on YouTube, somebody could search the Shopify channel and they have detailed tutorials on just about everything. Um, they have a wonderful tutorial. It's about an hour long and it, it goes from start to finish with like the most important things of your initial Shopify setup. So I went through that myself and I mean, it just takes you step by step. You just have to nice. pause the video and follow the directions and that's how easy it is. That's wonderful. I have keep muting myself because my dog has stolen a bone and he's making <laughs> an awful lot of noise with it. And he's quite mad at the cat who he thinks is going to steal it. So hopefully we won't have too much disruption over, <laughs> over the bone. Um, okay. That's great. Phoebe, let us know if that helps out. It sounds like you could actually follow along. Like it, you could have maybe the YouTube channel and the going over here and the Shopify mm -hmm. window over here and actually do the steps. And Does I have, even, yeah. yeah, even another way would be to watch the video on your phone. You know, oh, that's what yeah. I did. I set my phone up in front of my screen so that I could, you know, look at both things at the same time. But, you know, two monitors, you split your screen, use your phone, whatever. You know, it's real. There's so many ways to do it and you can do it. You know, that's I think that's the biggest thing, because I had been on Etsy for years I had, you know, managed my own domain for years, but for some reason I felt hesitant about starting a Shopify store. Like it was more legit, harder, whatever. Yeah. And actually it's made life so much easier. So I say, just try it, really commit to it. Give yourself a deadline um, and try it. And I bet you can figure it out. Okay. Well, if you have an affiliate link, you can drop that in there later on. That's a very nice thing to ask. Thank you. Okay. So we're really excited about the connection between Shopify and Pinterest. And that's really why, what moved you to say like, all right, two weeks, got to get it done. I'm going to go. Um, what does it mean to connect Shopify and Pinterest? Oh my gosh. I mean, I cannot get over the fact that it's free, you know, what is it? It's okay. So Pinterest has something called the verified merchant program. Yep. And this is how you set up your shop on Pinterest. Now, when I was still with the GoDaddy website builder, I needed to submit my catalog. I needed to come up with some code type. Did things. you do that? Were no. you able to get that? To work? That's, yeah. that, that's what smart. made me. Yeah. That's what made me say, I got to yeah. switch. And then I read yeah. online as I was researching how to do it. Um, and, you know, GoDaddy help is telling me, oh, we don't have, you know, an interface for it or whatever. I researched and then I found out that Shopify and Pinterest were partners. And that if you had a Shopify store, there was a natural integration there. Yeah. So I researched that. That's when I gave myself the deadline because I was like, I'm missing out on a huge opportunity. If over 90 percent of my social organic social traffic comes from Pinterest, you know, I need to take advantage of this. And so I did. And that's that's the key. You have to have Shopify. You have to be a part of the verified merchant program. And then Shopify will pin on your behalf your products. Um, it's yeah. almost it's not a secret board, but they will pin to a product board and over and over and over again. And it's the only place where Pinterest isn't penalizing you know, duplicate pens. Oh, that's a good point. We have Phoebe Moon is with you there. She stopped at that step. Don't have a catalog. I have no idea what they want. They told me that they want is basically a Google, Google shopping feed. But yeah. even that is like, whoosh, I don't know. I, I struggle <laughs> I with that too. Forever. I struggle with that too. Even yeah. within Shopify, my Google shopping isn't all the way set up because there's different numbers, mm -hmm. um, you know, classifications that Google requires that I haven't really set up. And so 
um, you know, that's, it's just a difficult thing to do, or at least to, it's, it's overwhelming and it's kind of intimidating. And I really love the fact that Shopify takes that out. I had my pinmyshop.com website integrated Pinterest verified within probably 72 hours of wow. starting the store. That is so great. Okay, so let's clarify. Verified merchant status will get you some cool things, like the little check mark on your on your profile that tells people like you are a legit business to buy from because Pinterest has vetted you. They've looked at things like, uh, do you have a, a privacy policy? Do you have shipping terms? Is it all clear? Is it all on the up and up? Even to the point of, do you have a domain specific email address? Like they are really wanting Pinterest to be a shopping site that people can trust. So these verified merchants, they have that. There are also benefits you get by being a verified merchant. Like your content appears in more places. Have you noticed that? Yes. And um, I do have to make a comment though, like to back up to what you were talking about with the, kind of the prerequisites that you have to have for the verified merchant program. Yeah. Um, I don't mean to make it sound like it was just all sunshine and roses when I set up because initially, <laughs> I, you know, my understanding was I started a Shopify store and automatically my stuff's for sale on Pinterest. Yeah. You know, that was not what happened. Okay. And, what happened? Okay. So what happened was, um, you know, I try, I tried to apply for the verified merchant program and I was denied. I think Common. it was because yeah, I think it was because I didn't have the shipping policy. Mm -hmm. And then I submitted again and it was because I didn't have the privacy policy. Oh, <laughs> and I so, told you that first. <laughs> yeah. So pretty much everything that you just said that you have to have, I didn't have, and oh, I wasn't aware that I didn't have it. Um, oh. but you know, the good news from that was Shopify has templates. Oh, yeah. That you can modify for yourself pretty quickly. Like the okay. and it's also terms of service. So oh, there's a terms of service sense. that's required as well. Um, so once I got all of that in order, I resubmitted. Um, but, you know, if you struggle with those things, it's really hard to get a hold of somebody at Pinterest, you know, and it's hard to pin somebody down to get <laughs> to tell you exactly why it's not working. Yeah. How so, did you get them to tell you or did you just figure it out? I, I think it was a combination of okay. both, you know, because in the midst of, you know, going back and forth with their help desk, I'm Googling, I'm a, I'm a Googler, like a professional <laughs> researcher <laughs> yes. on Google, you know, yeah. so I'm thinking somebody has to have had this problem. And so yes, I even wrote a blog about it. Um, crystalwaddellblog.com. That's the blog that's WordPress. Um, I wrote a blog about how to get verified on Pinterest just because these are all the mistakes I made and this is what happened to me. So, you know, I hope that it helps somebody else for sure. Sure it will. And we have Jana is here. Jana is an amazing artist. Thank you for joining us today. Talking okay. all about Pinterest and Shopify. So let me, let me clarify something. Now, I, I thought it was that you did not, like you could have your Pinterest and Shopify connected and have Pinterest creating shopping pins and then you get merchant mer merchant verified merchant verified. <laughs> I can't even do that. But um, are you saying it didn't create the shopping pins for you until you were verified? Well, that's also a tough question to answer okay. um, because what I know for myself is that everything didn't integrate the way that you know it's beautifully all working together until I was verified. Um, the other thing that makes it hard to tell for me is because I am an Etsy seller. So some of my product pins were already being verified through Etsy. And so I can't quite tell you when I made the transition from one to the other um, in terms of the product pins only showing up for Shopify. So, um, you know, I just know that the verified merchant program makes everything so much easier and more simple. Like once you're, once you're approved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The process is not so easy. I see yeah. a lot of discussions about that on the community too. So community.pinterest.biz. Um, and Jen is asking, I wonder if they're going to open it up to others like Squarespace. I mean, my guess is it's probably open. It's really more like it's up to the, to the individual sites, whether they want to get together and do it. Um, Jenna is also saying she's verified with Etsy. So maybe, maybe she has some products being created as well. Is that possible? Oh yeah. Well, and that's one of the options is to verify um, 
through Etsy, but it's been so long since I went through that particular process. I can't really speak to it, but I do know that you can do that. What I would suggest though, to most people, because, oh, I've got to tell you the main reason why I was so inspired to do this. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So no offense to Etsy, but one day, you know, I've been using Pinterest for years. And one day I decided to just follow the customer journey of my pen because it was doing really well. So I clicked on the pen. It led to my Etsy shop. And there at the bottom, I think at the time was a list of you might also like. And so when you are yeah. a handmade, yeah. yeah, when you're a handmade <laughs> creator, I think more than anything, I mean, that pierced my soul. You know, if anybody from Etsy sees this, I get it. You're a business, you know, and I respect that. And I respect that even more now than I did then. But it hurt me. You know, it hurt me because I had taken the time to, you know, take a great picture or video of my product. I took the time to get it out on Pinterest. You know, I took the time to write a description. I, I was taking the time to build my community on Pinterest. And so for someone to, you know, say, oh, that's exactly what I'm looking for and want to engage with my products and click through to see someone else's work that, oh, that was yeah. devastating, Elisa. Like that, that was the main motivator, you know, for me. Saying, yeah, I could see that different. And so when I heard about that Shopify Pinterest integration, I was like, this is the answer I've been looking for, you know, because now someone clicks on my pin, they go to my website. You own it. Yeah. It's only my work on my website. You know, I'm not, I'm not driving traffic to my competitors. Yes. I mean, well, and, and like that, that was clear that you had outgrown Etsy, right? Etsy is wonderful. If you don't have an audience, you don't have an email list because they bring that to you. They bring you the customers. But now that you've gotten to the point where you have your own customers, yeah, it's definitely time to own it. Um, well, and yeah. honestly, I still do sell on Etsy. I sell mm -hmm. Etsy. I sell Amazon handmade. But my mm -hmm. goal since I joined, you know, Pinterest and really like went all in on this verified merchant program, my goal was always for my sales to outpace my Etsy sales, you know, so my mm -hmm. actual Shopify mm -hmm. store to outpace my Etsy sales while growing my Etsy sales. And so I can happily report that in 2021, it happened. It's happening oh, right wonderful. now. Yeah, my, my sales are continuing to grow on Etsy, but Shopify is winning that race. So fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. And we have Maria here chiming in to say that you can have a shop, but the pins from your Shopify wouldn't rank well until we got the verified merchant badge. Oh, that is great to know. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. I knew there was something along those lines. I would yeah. I would have to agree with that. Okay, wonderful. So let's talk about, because you already hinted at this, like, Pinterest talks to Shopify, Pinterest creates pins, and they do it over and over again. So what exactly is happening? Let's say you have five items in your store. Like, can you walk me through what happens um, from day to day? Okay, so the catalogs update, up, <laughs> update. <laughs> they update once every 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> So I need to have some water, um, but they're supposed to update every 24 hours. So okay. if you add a new product, that product will um, then be, um, you know, uploaded to the Pinterest catalog and, you know, everything will go seamlessly from there. Now, one thing that I just recently was listening to someone speak about that they didn't like that I love, I have products with variations. So oh, okay. let's, let's just say I sell a number five. Um, because I sell wood numbers. These wooden numbers come in a foot, a foot and a half, two feet, two and a half feet, three feet, so on and so forth, all the way up to four feet. Okay. I use the same photo for each one of those variations because the number is the same. It yeah. just is, you know, bigger okay. or smaller. Well, some people don't like the fact that um, Pinterest will actually create a product pin or Shopify will create a product pin for every single variation. Oh, I see. So, okay. I, but I love that because I'm yeah. always of the mindset that, you know what, 
more is greater, you know, it's yeah. like, yeah, oh, someone might more. be searching like large house numbers or small house numbers. Now, exactly. if we're, if we're watching this and we're thinking, I want to see how Crystal set up her shop. Um, Frizzies. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So on Pinterest, we're going to, what's your account? Pinterest is a uh, collage and wood. Everyone okay. always says college. Like I even use, I even use that as an SEO term on my website oh, because yeah, so many people sense. say college and wood. Um, but yeah. it's, see, yep, exactly. Collage and wood on, on Pinterest. If you want to see how this is working and your items live on pinmyshop.com and they're connected. Oh, well, pinmyshop.com is how I help people with their Pinterest. Okay. So I have, you know, since I have learned so much, I'm trying to apply this to every That's e-commerce great. seller yeah. you know, that I can help. So so then what is the Shopify site for Collage and Wood? The Shopify site for Collage and Wood is collageandwood.com. Okay, that makes sense. We can figure that out. So if you go to that, yeah. that Pinterest uh, account, you'll be able to get to the site as well. So you can kind of see the connection. So, all right, you have you have all these numbers. I'm going to bring myself back up here. Um, we Let's say we have number five. We have three. Let's say we have three variations of it. So every day Pinterest is going to make a brand new pin for the small, medium and large number five? That's a good question. I want to follow yeah. up on that one because I'm not sure that it makes an, um, a brand new pin. It might, it might though, because I have over 10,000 pins. It might be over 20,000 now um, just on the products board that Shopify pins to Pinterest. Oh, okay. So it obviously oh. is pinning over and over again. Now, is it doing it daily? That's a great question. I would right. have to research that a little bit more. Because it is it. updating daily. So is it just throwing a new one on top of what's already there? That's a very interesting mm -hmm. question. Okay. Should you manually pin your products? If Pinterest and, and Shopify are doing those for you, should you still be manually pinning? Okay. So here's what I've learned. Okay. Yes. Yes, please. okay. Yeah. So last spring when everybody was freaking out or like in 2020, I verified my, my shop on uh, Pinterest and my, my views, my whatever, everything exploded. You know, yeah. I went from probably 500,000 a month or whatever to a million or more uh, monthly impressions. And mm -hmm. everybody else was, you know, crying about it. You know, so I was like, I don't know, I don't know what's going on, but I then I soon realized what was going on um in the Shopify uh connection with Pinterest. So one thing that had been working for me really well at that time as well were video pins. And mm -hmm. I, would, I would take a video of one of these collages that I make. I can show you. It looks something like this just to give you a picture of it. Okay. So if you ever see that go across your feed on Pinterest, that's usually <laughs> that's <me>. you. <laughs> my husband will turn it like this. I mean, we make the most rudimentary videos, you know, I mean, yeah. these are not high production things here. Um, but, you know, he has good arms, you know, and I think maybe <laughs> that good might arms. be good from business. <laughs> sure. <laughs> So oh, that's funny. yeah, so but he would he would kind of do that and I would video, you know, the collage and they would get like 1000, 2000, 10,000 views wow, okay. in less than 15 minutes or less than an hour. Uh oh, did I lose you? Well, no. I'm okay. Here. So sorry. I'm here. I'm just actually I'm just over here looking at your Pinterest collage and wood and these are pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, those were doing well. So Shopify integration was doing well. The video pins were doing well. And then I noticed that my third party, I was using Tailwind at the time, my third party uh, pins were, were getting like significantly less impressions, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, that's strange, you know? And I thought it was all about the video, but then I uploaded photos. I uploaded new images of my photo props and they were getting like hundreds and thousands of, you know, impressions and clicks right away. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this is, you know, all good questions. What is going on here? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, so those, those are the things that started happening. And then a couple months later, my account started experiencing what other people were talking about even more with the, the, um, the, just the organic or native pinning to, to the Pinterest platform, 
those pins started not doing as well. My video pins started not doing as well. I had gotten caught up in a spam filter. Oh, really? Yes. And if my husband doesn't stop calling, I love him to death, but I think I told him <laughs> I called today. But he has good arms. <laughs> yes, he does. I mean, he's the money maker, so he can call anytime, yeah, right? That's right. Um, so so yeah, um that's yeah, when I realized a spam filter. How did you how did you find that out for sure? Well, you know, when you notice such a drop um in impressions and and clicks on my organic pins, it was difficult to fill out or figure out Elisa because um, I run ads, you know, mm -hmm. on the other side. And so it's almost like there's two sides of Pinterest. There's an organic and then there's a paid search. So my impressions and my, uh, some of my ad, ad uh, pins were doing well. And with Shopify connected, that was still doing well. So I knew there was a missing piece, though. Something wasn't right. And, you know, I went back and forth with Pinterest for a couple of months. And oh, wow. finally, things kind of started to resolve. But again, I think the Verified Merchant Program really helped me weather that storm. Mm -hmm. um, so I said all that to say this. <laughs> My current strategy, and I would recommend this for most people, whatever was working for you in your native pinning or whatever was working for you before, move that to an idea pin. Mm -hmm. Because every time I would email Pinterest and say, something's wrong with my account, you know, like I'm not getting all these views. It would come back this form email, something about idea pins. And I was like, I'm not talking about you know, like yes, what has nothing to do with do this. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then I start my husband started doing the videos, uploaded as an idea pin. We're back on, you know, okay. with impressions, clicks. And the great thing for e-commerce sellers who are verified merchants, listen up. <laughs> you can tag your products in the idea yes. pins. So we are some of the lucky few then can actually capitalize on that push that the idea pins get out into Pinterest. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We can't have a link, but we can tag our pins. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Brian is here noticing that we mentioned verification, meaning to ask if you should try to get a tick against my account name. And can I, Oh, as a service supplier, no, you, unfortunately you have to sell something, right? And it has to be a physical product. You can't do digital downloads. Is that correct? Not necessarily on, on my website, I sell digital products as well. That works. Okay. I have two products, um, a mug and a book, <laughs> but everything else is digital. Now, this is what I've been suggesting to people. You know, it's time to create a product. If you've been a mm -hmm. digital marketer and a, di a digital seller, you know, for years, it's time to create a, a physical product. And that way you can give yourself the boost that you want to have on Pinterest. If Pinterest is your thing, if Pinterest is your platform and you want to, you know, make friends with Pinterest again, <laughs> I really strongly suggest that people create a product. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Okay. So we, we talked a little bit about, should you also pin, even though Pinterest is making pins for you, you said, yes, especially idea pins. When you look at your analytics, what are people clicking on? Are they clicking more on the, the pins that you design, create and upload, or are they clicking more on your, like your shop pins that Shopify and Pinterest made? That's a great question. A really great question. Um, I would say that Shopify generates probably most of the traffic. Really? Okay. But the other thing I also am fortunate because I've been using Pinterest for so long and, um, you know, the OG Pinterest users will appreciate this. I have pins that do well every year, every okay. season, you mm -hmm. know, and because my, my business is so seasonal, you know, I'm seeing pins that I haven't seen for five years resurface and, you know, get some action <laughs> from a lot of different people. And I'm like, I don't even like that pin. I don't even want that pin yeah, to typical. out there on the internet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I, the legacy pins still do function well for me as well. Okay. Very good. All right. We have some questions here. Brian really, really wants to take advantage of this <laughs> and tag a service in his idea pin. I don't think you can do that, but good follow up question. Can I create a wedding photography package as a product? I think that might be possible. 
Yeah, I would try I, that. Yeah, I think you got to think along those lines of what can, what can I create that's a physical product that will allow people to click through these idea pins? Because I, I could see that being very frustrating if you're creating idea pins and people can't get to you. Right, right. Absolutely. Okay, Jenna has a question as well. Can you tag from Etsy and Squarespace? Okay, so Squarespace isn't going to integrate like Shopify does, but I would think you could tag an Etsy pin, right? You just put in the URL of the pin when you're when you're adding your tag. Do you have any other tips? I have no comment. <laughs> I wouldn't tag. I wouldn't go through and tag anything to Etsy. <laughs> okay. But if you won't, if that's your only option, like if that's the only yeah. place you're selling. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, um, you can go back in and um, if we're just, even just talking about regular pins, you can go back in and edit a pin and, and tag a product in there. So yes. um, if your shop is verified, which it sounded like Janice was, or that she had done that through Etsy, um, it shouldn't be a difficult thing to go back in and edit and then just choose the option that says tag a product, you know, okay. and then it'll um, kind of put it off to the side of that pin or underneath that pin and it'll show up when someone clicks on that pin. Okay. Excellent. Keep those questions coming. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. This is, this is great. All right. Let's talk about optimizing. Mm. I have a lot of questions about this. So, right. <laughs> so when you're looking at your Shopify product and the way you're setting that up, should you write your item description in Shopify that would be a good pin description? Like, is the product title going to become your pin title? Like, what do we need to know and how do we set up our Shopify site so that things will work well on Pinterest? You know, this is this has been an interesting, like, topic of conversation amongst a lot of people for different reasons. Okay. Um, but obviously whatever's going to make more sense for you to get more sales or more views and more clicks on Pinterest, I would do that, which means keywords are important. Um, and so using the right keywords in your product description is probably going to be helpful for things to be found in search on Pinterest. Now, having said that, I think what's most important is that, um, people look inward to themselves and to their product because there's one thing that's never going to change unless you decide to change it. And that's your product. So you're the only one who knows your product the way you do. How would you describe it? Like I was talking to one of my clients today and um, she was talking about, you know, how she ranked for keywords, even on Etsy unintentionally. But one of the reasons why she ranked was because she described her product, you know, and she was one of the initial sellers of that particular item. So essentially she created the keywords, you know what I mean? Which mm. is very interesting. So, you know, I believe that Pinterest keywords and SEO research go hand in hand. Those mm -hmm. board titles are indexed by Google, right? Yep. So, you know, do a Google keyword search. You know, use uh, Uber Suggest or Keywords Everywhere or some sort of free tool or have a nerd like me do it for you, you know, but do the keyword research and find out what words people are actually using to find your product, to find your solution, and then use those words. Use those words in your product description. Use those words in your product title. Use those words in your pin title. Use those words in your pin description. I mean, yeah. Really, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you know your product, you know the words that people are using to search, and you're you're dropping those words, you know, within your product, wherever it is. Okay. So when when Pinterest and Shopify make your product pins based on the feed, are they actually pulling the Shopify product title? as the pin title and the description as a pin description. Okay. Yeah. And the, and the picture as well. So this is yeah, one, one place I'm kind of torn because, you know, Pinterest pins do best vertical, right. Mm -hmm. And especially yeah. on mobile and Shopify product pictures are square. Yes. So there's that. Yeah. No, I don't but, love that either, but you're, you're telling me and I'm hearing that the pins that are doing the best for people tend to be their shop pins. 
and it, they're they're going to be square most of the time. So can I add something on that? Of course. Okay. Yes. So I'm a fan of just like trying something new for why not? You know, yeah. I mean, it's your business. Try That's whatever right. you want. <laughs> um, but making like a, a pin and using it as a product photo. Yes. How does that work for well, you? Well, I mean, it's it's as simple as, you know, creating a pin. Let's say you're using yeah. Canva. Um, you and you're you're doing it in a vertical format, you know, right, right. Um, two to three. You download it, you upload it to your right. Shopify store. I guess um, what I meant, like, does that work well? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it does. Yeah, I mean, I I'm testing it right now, so I can't okay. tell you like you know a big long you know statistical thing. Yeah. But I'm just saying that then you have the option of your pin showing up vertically. Yeah within that situation. Okay. So if you want that to happen, and I could see why you definitely would, would then that have to be your first photo on the Shopify product? Like which one are they pulling? They pull all of them. That's what yeah. I was talking about earlier. Um, I was doing it about multiple products, but yeah. multiple photos for one oh. product. Oh, wow. I did not realize that. Mm -hmm. So every product photo that you upload is going to become a separate pin? That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Okay, yeah. we have a thought here from our friend whose name I will not try to pronounce because it won't be good. Um, <laughs> feel free to give me a phonetic spelling there. Thanks for doing this. My question is for a small business with a lot of inventory, not drop shipping, just boutique. We're seeing a lot of bounces from vendors, products we no longer carry. Now, that Shopify integration would take care of that, right? Because if it's not in your shop, it's not going to be on Pinterest, right? Well, that depends. Um, let's say that that was actually uploaded as a regular pin. Oh, yeah. That's, and then yeah, the landing right. page, the landing page expired. So what I would do is I would redirect that pin to another product or to your homepage. It's not ideal for yeah. you to redirect it to your homepage, but. Well, and you can't like you often cannot change the link on a pin and you're, you're not going to be able to. Um, on all the pins that other people have saved. Right. So you could, in Shopify, will they allow you to redirect an individual page to another page? Yeah, sure, you, you can. can do okay. that. Yeah, um, you could just do it like a permanent 301. Is that what yeah. you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could do a permanent redirect that way. Um, but if it is your pin, if it's your own pin, you should be able to edit the link. And, you know, watch, watch Pinterest change a whole bunch of stuff after we talk, oh, they change you know? all the time. And I think <laughs> not every account is the same thing. But the, but the thing is, though, like, okay, you change yours, but there are probably 400 saves out there that you will not be right. changing. Exactly. So yeah. it's better to do it on your end, if at all That's possible. smart. That's really a smart idea. Yeah, because then everybody gets that redirect. So it's yeah. a great yeah, idea. Can see that being really frustrating and you're right people would bounce right if it's if it's not available it's frustrating okay um let's see any specific please bring your specific questions what else should we talk about shopify and pinterest is there any reason you would okay okay here's a good one i was talking to somebody i think it was a consulting client and they're like we're thinking of removing our shop because we don't like having the first thing people see on our profile be this shop Mm, yeah. Why well, would they want to do that? I don't, I didn't get a chance to ask. <laughs> well, you know, one thing aesthetically, you know, maybe people like having a variety of pins showing up mm -hmm. um, as their kind of landing page on Pinterest. But what people have to remember is um, most people searching for your solution or searching for your type of product on Pinterest aren't going to your profile. So when you log in, the first thing you see is your profile. But if I was if I was looking for artwork, Elisa, and I saw your artwork in my feed and I click through, I'm still not clicking through necessarily to your profile. I'm clicking through to that product page or that pin page on Pinterest. So I would I would tell this person, I would give them some tough love. You know, the first thing I would tell them is maybe you need new products, you know, or new product <laughs> photos. That would be the first thing. And the second thing is, you know, don't worry about it because they're not going to that page most of the time anyway. Yeah. Have you noticed, and this is an idea pin question, when I, 
sometimes I get to the last page, right? And there's a follow button. Like I'm looking at one of yours right now and it's that collage you showed me actually. And <laughs> the, um, the button is follow. That, like you're saying, that does not take me to my profile. I just plain followed you right there. Now I can click and go to your profile and yes, then I would see, I see um, your shop. Is that what happens? I'm curious. Yes, I see your shop and it looks great, but you're right. Maybe there is an issue where like their product photos are not that appealing. Yeah. And yeah. if you only have limited numbers of products, yes. you know, so if you only have three products, you're only going to have three squares. Right. You right. know, That's so a little bit sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. We do have a question from Maria. She wants to know about hashtags. She saw them working on mobile, but she doesn't use them. Okay, I have thoughts, but I'm gonna let you go first. Oh, I wanna hear your thoughts so badly. I was just thinking, I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't like kicked it back to you to say, what do you think of that? Cause you're, you're my hero. So, um, <laughs> hashtags. Yeah, um, do you use them? I don't use them anymore. Right. Um, yeah. I used to use them not for any particular reason, except for I use them on Instagram. So I thought I should use them on Pinterest as well. Um, I would say the one advantage I have to using hashtags is I use the hashtag senior night. So okay. if you go to that hashtag, you're going to see a lot of my pins. So one advantage I think that did give me is that I look like an authority for that hashtag because I show up so often. I haven't checked it for a while, but I'm pretty sure. I'm looking at it now. I do see one of your video. Oh, it's a TikTok video you did mm -hmm. is in the, at the very top. Yeah. And I yeah. haven't done it for a while, but this might be making a case for hashtags. I don't know. I'd love well, to know. well, <laughs> like who's for that though, right? Yeah. So I do not use them. Uh, I typically will go with what Pinterest says. And, you know, if at first it was, yes, use them. No, don't use them. Yes, use them. Now the official word is no, don't use them. Just use your um, descriptions. And like, yes, when I just now typed in, um, what was it? Senior night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, like technically seems to work. Although let me check this pin. Uh, yeah, it actually is working. However, the only time I ever put a, a hashtag in the search bar is for something like this. Mm -hmm. I would never search a hashtag on Pinterest. And I think that's probably why they're saying don't, don't do it because people just don't use Pinterest that way. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have any thoughts in the comments, please chip in. Uh, Brian has an idea here. Maybe create a page. Sorry, this product is no longer available, but check out these amazing items. Yeah, you could, yeah. right? You could leave that page live and have, hopefully there are, are there related items? Like in your Shopify site, will it pull other related items from your store as other options on that page or no? It will do that on active pages, but I'm, I've not seen it on like a, this project, this product is expired type thing. If, okay. you know, or sold out. I'm not, I, that's a good question. I'm sorry. I'd have to follow up with that one because- yes. No not problem. exactly sure. Okay. Now I've been hearing a little rumbling that those shopping pins are working amazingly well as Pinterest ads. And I really would like to get my hands on some <laughs> so that I can, I can do it. I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but I, what I love about them is you can do things like um, target people who've added to your cart. Mm. So if somebody adds um, your is that like a baseball collage? Was that what you showed me? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm really great with it's sports. It's either baseball or soccer. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. The first right. one was baseball, but you might have seen the soccer one. <laughs> I don't know what I, I don't know what they are. Um, yeah. So if if I had added that to my car on your Shopify site and then I left, which so many people do that, right? Mm -hmm. Then you can have an ad set up that says, okay, find these people who have added the baseball collage to their car and did not purchase and you can target those people, which is amazing. And as people are shopping more and more towards holiday season, if that's yeah. something you want to do, like set them up, or if you want me to set them up, I really want to try it. So 
<laughs> so yeah. get with me because I would I would love to work with that. AlisaMeredith.com, all kinds of fun experiments with Pinterest going on. Let me know if we can work something out uh, because amazingly powerful. <sighs> okay, yes. Um, can you tell I used to be a teacher? <laughs> <laughs> Please, M uh, Ms. Waddell. <laughs> yeah, um, it was actually Coach Waddell because oh. I was a, a PE teacher and volleyball uh -huh. coach, um, which why all the sports ball pictures that makes make sense. sense. Okay. Yeah, um, but I was going to say I do run a retargeting campaign for um, like my collages and different things, and the return that that ROAS number mm -hmm. is really high on the retargeting. So that's exciting, you know, yes, and um, yeah. yeah, I've been playing around with the different amounts, but, you know, I definitely would love to pick your brain about that someday. Right, well, maybe we could run an experiment together. Yeah, I'm yeah. all about the experiment. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. Okay, so I am going to start a Shopify site or store today. Ooh. Are there... Uh, I'm not really because I don't have oh, anything. Oh, hypothetical. So. Okay. <laughs> Hypothetically, maybe I could put some paintings on there. I don't know, but... Yeah. Um, should. I might just to be able to try this all out. Uh, what are some common mistakes? Have you seen any, or is it just so foolproof that like you don't have to worry about it? Okay. Common mistakes, um, would be the biggest one I feel like I made, you know, is not understanding SEO and mm. not understanding, um, meta descriptions because a lot of times people will create a product, someone I know, like a friend, you know, whatever, they'll create a product and then they'll duplicate it, you know, and just change some um, details in the product description or whatnot. Well, we've all done that. <laughs> yeah. Um, when that happens in Shopify, it creates a title uh, or it creates a copy of the title and a copy of the meta description. So what you end up with is a bunch of duplicate meta descriptions yes. or ir irrelevant meta descriptions. So it's just something, you know, you want to kind of go back through and make sure because as soon as you create that first URL, Shopify will automatically uh, create like a, a redirect for you if you change the URL. But still, um, do you really want to be creating redirects, you know, no. from the get go when you know, if you just kind of take that extra moment and check the title and meta description. But honestly, I didn't even know those things existed. You know, it was just through conversations with people, yeah. um, Clubhouse and hearing a word that I didn't know what it meant and looking it up, you know, Googling it. Queen of Google. It, yep. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So you mentioned a couple of, do they call them plugins over there when, when it's like an add on? App. They call them apps. Apps. Okay. So you mentioned an app that you found helpful with SEO. Do you happen to remember what it was called? Oh, I think it might be called, uh, it's called Plugin SEO. Plugin SEO. Okay. So if you're yeah. on Shopify, check that out. And it's free? It's not free. That one's not. Okay. Yeah. There are free options. That one's not free. Um, but I think I pay five or $10 a month, maybe, okay. maybe $20 a month. I can't remember. But there's certain things that I'm willing to pay for like that because SEO is so important. Um, and, you know, the other thing about the Shopify store is it also integrates with Instagram shopping and Facebook shopping. Does it set up a store for you, basically? Or how does that work? You, the same way that Shopify has an app for Pinterest, it also has an app for Facebook. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Yeah. And a, and a, and a, the shop for Facebook actually sets up Instagram shopping now too. Like it used right. to be a separate thing. Um, so it's just a few clicks of a button, but on my Instagram collage and wood Instagram, there's a shop there as well. So okay. it just allows you to put your wares <laughs> on every social channel. Okay. So if you're wanting to see how this looks collage and wood um, on both Pinterest and Instagram. Okay. Uh, can you use Shopify? Like you have to have something to sell. So it could be a digital download. It could be a physical thing. Is there any kind of, I'm deep into the like membership world right now. Is there any kind of um, community in there that you can build or anything like that? Oh man, we could talk forever. I have a feeling we could talk forever. <laughs> you know we could. Okay. Yeah. So I was having problems with Kartra, right. And okay. setting up the different whatevers. Um, 
And so that's when I thought to myself, I was like, wow, I wonder if Shopify has a course integration, if there's a yeah. course app, the answer is yes. Ooh. So, you know, yeah. again, some of these apps cost money. I think that one was like $20 or whatever, but you could essentially um, build your own course within Shopify. Now, Shopify mm -hmm. also has a membership function built into it um, where, you know, people can create an account and you log in. Yes. I have not utilized that, so I don't know the full potential of that. But okay. to me, that sounds like there could be something there as well. Yeah. And what about email? Do you would you use email like Shopify's email just to send out a newsletter or how does that work? Yes, absolutely. So they have um, built in email capture forms that, you know, you can just drop in the bottom and sign up for, you know, make something creative, please, yes. you know, and, and then send me your ideas because I'm terrible. Um, but yeah. And, and recently when they, um, when they came up with the new updates at the most recent Shopify summit, I forgot the name of it right now off the top of my head. Um, they made some upgrades to email and I was talking mm -hmm. to other Shopify experts about it because a lot of e-commerce people will use Klaviyo and I yeah. use Klaviyo right now for uh, collage and wood. But when I heard about the functions of the Shopify email, it sounded a lot like it was building in more automations and different things like Klaviyo. And I thought, huh, that's it. Yeah. And I brought it up and the Shopify experts were kind of like, that's no big deal or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when you are the e-commerce store owner and you know the importance of things that integrate easily so that you can just run your business and move on with your life, it's something to take a look at. So it's gotten an upgrade and I use it for um, pin my shop. That's interesting. Okay. So um, I've also been looking very deeply at Clavio uh, this week too. So one of the cool things that they do is like, if you have something that was out of stock that a, someone had looked at before, now mm. it's back in stock, you can have a, an SMS go out to let's say 10 people. Because the last thing you want to do is, right, you, you get 10 in stock, you message 100 people, and then 90 people are disappointed. Like, let's pretend they all clicked. Yeah. Right? So what you can do is you can just send it to 10, and then you mm -hmm. wait a little bit. And if there are still items left, you send it to 10 more. And then That's you, awesome. Really cool. Really, really cool. Yeah. If Shopify could build that in, that would be amazing. Okay. But I think like, Klaviyo plays really well with Shopify, too. Well, one thing about the SMS function of Klaviyo, I don't have that. That's like an additional charge. It's like another mm -hmm. level of Klaviyo. So that's something that I don't have on my minimalist plan. Yeah. So. Okay. I, I, I have it for my, for my two subscribers. If you'd like to join the list <laughs> and be alerted when we are going live for amazing guests like Crystal, mm -hmm. you can text show to 844-459-1035 and join my mother and my friend Jeff C on this list <laughs> and always know when we're going live. Love to have you there. Just kind of experimenting. Um, all these amazing technologies are out there. And mm -hmm. because my list is so small, it's completely free. I need. I wanted something that I could just play with. And this yeah. this was it for me was Klaviyo. Even though it's not built for me, it's built for stores. Um, does it work in the UK? Yeah. Yeah, it does. I so can, the, I can the do SMS feature is free on Klaviyo for you? Yes, because I have so few people on my list and anybody starting okay. out probably will, right? Because you're not just going to take your email subscribers and add them. You're going to get people to opt in specifically for. Oh, well, I'll have to look into that. I didn't know. Maybe I might qualify for that. So. You might. Yeah. And I just like, I like to try all the things. <laughs> yeah, my email list is where I have to pay for it, but yeah. I haven't even tried to get SMS going oh, because yeah. I thought it was a different level. So thank you. Yeah, of Check course. You're welcome. Okay. Well, we are about out of time. Um, oh, something solved a problem for Phoebe Moon. I don't know what it was, but I'm super happy. Maybe <laughs> it was SMS. Our work here is done. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And um, Brian is saying that he followed you on Pinterest. Brian is oh, a yeah. wonderful conversationalist. I'm sure you guys will be in touch. Uh, so if you want to help with your Shopify and your Pinterest, please uh, visit pinmyshop.com for Crystal. Um, if you want 
to work with me, alisameredith.com. You have so many options and we would both love to help you out. Um, Crystal has some amazing uh, products that you can get right now, right? So I'm slacking on that totally. Yeah. So, <laughs> so can you tell us about the products that you have if someone's interested in Pinterest or Shopify? Wow. Well, the biggest thing I have um, right now is a power up and essentially I'll clean up your Pinterest account, make relevant boards, do the keyword research, um, not just for Pinterest, but for Google as well. So you have it for SEO for your site, oh, great. because I feel like it's only halfway done. If you know, I only did the keywords for Pinterest. That's how I felt about my own shop. So, um, so I have that, um, I'm, I've, I've got a whole bunch of different things. I'm trying to think I've got a keywords mini course. Um, oh, cool. I've got okay. uh, different SEO sprints, like different things for your website. So if you need keywords, if you need um, anything like that, SEO related, um, but not Pinterest, I can do that as well. So yeah, oh, just cool. check it out and get a mug. Bye, Get book. a mug. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for being here. And thank you to all our friends for joining us today. It was lovely as always. And we will see you again next week. Thank you Thanks, so Crystal. much, Elisa. So I much loved fun. it. <laughs>